सो हेलो एवरीवन सो दिस इज सी एस अनिद्या सराफ एंड टुडे वी आर गोइंग टू रिवाइज ए वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट चैप्टर दैट इज इन कॉपरेशन ऑफ कंपनीज सो इफ वी टॉक अबाउट इन कॉपरेशन ऑफ कंपनीज इट इज द वेरी बेस ऑफ कंपनी लॉ इट इज द वेरी बेसिक चैप्टर यू नो विच इज कनेक्टेड विद द फंडामेंटल ऑफ लॉ एंड फॉर एग्जाम अगेन इट इज वेरी वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट so in cooperation of companies that is we have chapter number 2 of the companies act and it covers section 3 to section 22 right so in cooperation of companies that is chapter number 2 of the companies act and it consists of section 3 to section 22 so first let us you know just see the logical flow of the sections how the sections are being connected with each other so section 3 that is the very first section of the chapter that talks about formation of companies right then when the companies are formed there are two fundamental documents of a company the most important documents of a company one is memorandum of association and other is articles of association so section number 4 we have is memorandum of association section number 5 is we have articles of association and section number 6 says that entire the companies act will override the memorandum articles so section 4 5 6 all three relates to moa all three relates to aoa then after that we have section 7 that is the incorporation of a company and section 8 we have incorporation of a section 8 company so we have a not for profit organization section number 8 so section number 3 we have the moa section number 3 we have the formation section 4 we have the moa section 5 we have the aoa section 6 we have that is act is more powerful section 7 we have incorporation section 8 we have section 8 company and once the certificate of incorporation is issued by the registrar of companies then the company is legally registered so section number 9 talks about the certificate of registration it talks about the certificate of registration right the sections of memorandum association and articles of association are scattered in the chapter like if we talk about memorandum we have section 3 moa we have section number 13 that is alteration of moa we have section number 4 5 that is aoa we have section number 14 that is alteration of aoa alteration of aoa so accordingly we have to see the flow first of all when we talk about section 3 that is the basic formation of the company Uh, so see who is the person who is involved in forming the company it is the promoter who is involved in promo you know forming the company and the definition of promoter is given in section 2 clause 69 of the companies act and in the definition of promoter uh, section 2 clause 69 they have included three aspects mainly one they have said that promoter means a person whose name is given whose name is given in the prospectus as a promoter or whose name is given in the annual return as a promoter and other thing in the definition of promoter what they say is who controls who controls the business right who controls the business and thirdly what they say is that if the directors of the company are working under the direction instruction advice of a person that person is also called as a promoter that person is also called as a promoter and one thing we must keep in mind that when we think of the promoter it is not always important that he will be connected with the initial formation of the company it might happen that he is not connected with the initial formation of the company but he is still a promoter right it is not always important that the promoter is going to be the shareholder it might happen that the person was a promoter he initially formed the company and later on he did not became a shareholder so all the possibilities are there now we have section 3 that is formation of company when we talk about formation of company then for the lawful purpose of the act a public company will need minimum 7 members private company will need minimum 2 members a one person company will need minimum one member now basically to ensure that a minimum number of requirement there is a concept of subscribers to memorandum so when the memorandum will be formed those minimum number of members who will undertake to subscribe for the shares will be called as the subscribers to memorandum and later on when they actually subscribe for the shares they will be called as members now this very companies that will be incorporated they will be they can be other company limited by shares or they can be company limited by guarantee or they can be unlimited liability companies as well right and when we talk about public and private companies those public and private companies can also be uh, you know ifsc public or ifsc private companies what are ifsc companies international financial service center international financial service center so those public or private companies can also be ifsc public or ifsc private companies that is set up in the special economic zones and so that is why they are given several exemptions 
Then in section three, they have explained the concept of one person company in the proviso and in the rules. So the concept of one person company, what it says, first of all, when we talk about one person company, so basically when we talk about one person company, there is going, going to be only one member in case of one person company. But we have to remember that the restriction is only for the membership. The restriction is not for the directorship. The restriction is for the membership. Then only a natural person can be can form a one person company. A artificial person cannot form a one person company. Secondly, only a major can form a one person company. A minor cannot form a one person company. And thirdly, uh, only an Indian citizen can form a one person company. When we talk about Indian citizenship, we do, do not mean residence. So it may happen that an Indian resident who stays 365 days out of India, even he can form a one person company. And if we talk about resident here, resident means a person who has stayed in India for a period of at least 120 days during the immediately preceding financial year. Now we have to remember one thing, there is an important restriction when we form an OPC. OPC cannot be converted later into a section 8 company. OPC can never be converted later on into a section 8 company. It can be converted into a private company or it can be converted into a public company, but it can never be converted into a section 8 company. And OPC cannot carry out the NBFC activities, the financing activities. And also uh, OPC will not be able to invest in any securities of any body corporate. OPC will not be able to invest in any securities of any body corporate. Then one thing to ensure the perpetual succession. The law says that the memorandum of the OPC will indicate the name of the natural person other than a minor who is an Indian citizen who will act as the nominee of the member. That if suppose anything happens to the member, that particular nominee will become the member. And prior consent of that very nominee must be obtained in INC 3. So now this concept of INC is very important. The name of such a nominated person, the name of such nominee in form INC 32 that is the spice form along with the consent of the nominee and with fee shall be given to the registrar, shall be intimated to the registrar. I always say that registrar is the god of company law, the temple of company law. Everything the company does, company has to intimate to the ROC. So when the consent of nominee is obtained, that is to be obtained, intimated to the ROC. Now we have to remember one thing, one very important thing. A natural person can be a member in only one OPC and similarly he can be a nominee also only in one OPC. Now, it may happen that I am a member in OPC 1, I am a nominee in OPC 2. Now, let us say I am a member in OPC 1, I am a nominee in OPC 2. In OPC 2, I am a nominee of some member called as Mr. Ram. Now, Mr. Ram dies. Now, if Mr. Ram dies, I will become the member of OPC 2. In that situation, it will happen that I will become the member of 2 OPC. And that law does not allow. So, in that particular scenario, law gives us 180 days time. Law gives us 180 days time to decide in which OPC I want to continue as a member. Next, uh, when we open, uh, when we particularly, you know, appoint a nominee and take the written consent of nominee, it may happen that nominee wants to withdraw his consent. It may also happen that company wants to replace the nominee. It might also happen that the company, you know, replaces the nominee because of the death of the nominee or something like that. So whenever the nominee withdraws his consent, we have to think logically the nominee will intimate in writing to the sole member that boss, I don't want to be your nominee. And he will also intimate in writing to the OPC. Right. Now what the sole person will do? The sole person needs immediately another nominee. So he will nominate another person as a nominee within 15 days of the receipt of notice of withdrawal. The sole, per the sole member shall nominate another person as nominee within 15 days of the receipt of withdrawal. And he will inform to the ROC about the old nominee as well as about the new nominee. And when this alteration is done, when this nominee is changed, uh, that will also affect the memorandum because memorandum also consists of the nominee clause. Memorandum also consists of the nominee clause. Now, whenever there is an alteration in the memorandum, normally special resolution is passed. But when there is an alteration in the nominee clause, then in that situation, we shall treat it that, uh, you know, it is not an alteration of MOA. We shall treat that MOA is not altered only. Uh, similarly, it may happen that the member may change the nominee. Now, if the member will change the nominee, the member will intimate in writing to the other person that you are not a nominee anymore. The member will have to get the prior consent of the new nominee and again have to file the prior consent of the new nominee to the, nominee to the ROC. And similarly, it will happen that, uh, you know, one fine day, the member dies and the nominee becomes the member. Or something happens to the member and nominee becomes the member. Now, when nominee happens, becomes a member. Now, nominee has become a member. He has stepped into the shoes of member. He will also need to nominate his nominee. 
within 15 days of becoming the member and in all the three cases we have discussed above you know that is whether the nominee has withdrawn the consent or the nominee has been replaced or the nominee uh, has automatically become a member the intimation must be given to roc the intimation must be given to roc in inc4 with the fees as prescribed and there are several relaxations that is given to opc that is the opcs are not required to pre prepare the cash flow statements the opcs are not required to prepare the cash flow statement they are not required to follow the provisions of general meeting the annual return that is filed to the roc normally that is signed by a director and a company secretary but in case of opc they are required to be signed only by the director not by a company secretary uh, normally the companies are required to hold four board meetings in a year but in case of one person company they are required to hold an, at only one board meeting in each half of calendar year normally the companies are required to file the copies of financial statement within 30 days of agm to the roc but opcs are allowed to file the financial statement within 6 months of the closer of financial year within 6 months of the closer of financial year now there is section 3a what does section 3a says section 3 talked about the requirement of minimum number of members that is 1 2 7 right now in case of private company the requirement was of 2 members in case of public company the requirement was of 7 members suppose if the number of members fall below 2 and 7 then the remaining members they have to ensure that they increase the limit back to 2 and 7 but if 6 months have passed the number of members reduced below 2 and 7 6 months have elapsed and still the number company carries on business with reduced number of members and the other members knew about it then in that very situation the members will become jointly liable for the debts of the company that is what section 3a says then we have a very important section that is section 7 in cooperation of a company when we talk about the in cooperation of a company whenever the company is incorporated that is you know we have to bring into life a newborn baby that is the company the application has to be given to the roc and which roc in whichever state you are setting up your company in that particular jurisdiction you have to give the application if you are setting up your company in karnataka you have to give application to the roc of karnataka and that application is to be given in spice plus form that application is given in spice plus form that is simplified pro firma for incorporating a companies electronically in form nc32 along with the fees now spice 30 spice plus form is electronic pro firma one single web form you may apply for the incorporation you may apply for the reservation of name all these things you can do under one particular form so for reservation of name also you see that spice plus form only will be used now along with the along with the application the, there the company has to give some documents to the ROC what are the documents firstly the company has to file the most important documents memorandum and articles to the ROC copy of memorandum articles and the law allows filing of e memorandum and filing of e articles the memorandum shall state the name of subscribers of memorandum who have agreed to subscribe the shares for the company and regarding the subscribers four details must be given the name of the subscribers must be given the address of the subscribers must be given uh, then a description must be given occupation must be given occupation of subscriber must be given and at least details of one witness also shall be given right also details of one witness also they shall be given now they have given several clarifications like if the subscriber is illiterate uh, then the, his thumb impression will be given if the subscriber is a body corporate then in that particular situation the body corporate will not come and sign the body corporate will not come and sign so the, uh, the director officer employee authorized by the body corporate will sign but that director officer employee should also not be a subscriber of memorandum that director officer or employee should also not be a subscriber to the memorandum and to the articles similarly if the subscriber is llp the llp will not go and sign so the partner of the llp who is authorized will sign but that partner who is signing should not be a subscriber of that very company so like this clarifications are given after that inc8 is to be filed after that inc8 is to be filed with the roc what is inc8 declaration of compliance by professionals and director manager company secretary of the company that is declaration is given either by the advocate or a chartered accountant or a cost accountant company secretary in practice whoever is engaged in formation of the company and also a declaration is given by the person whose name is given in the articles as director manager or secretary of the company whose name is given in the articles as director manager secretary of the company that all the requirements of the act has been complied then there is a declaration required in inc8 
by the subscribers of memorandum and by the first directors of the company what is the declaration in the declaration they give that all the documents we have filed to the registrar are true and correct then they further declare that we are not convicted of any offense we are not convicted of any offense in connection with promotion formation or management of the company and we have not been found guilty of any fraud or misfeasance we have not been found guilty of any fraud or misfeasance on any breach of duty or any breach of duty under this company's act or previous company's act in the last five years then again uh, the company will also have to file an address of correspondence to the roc that till the time we established the registered office this is our address for correspondence then the details of the first directors the details of the subscribers to memorandum that the company has to give the company will also have to give uh, the details of the first directors the details of the subscribers like the name the address the phone number the mail id and if it is a director the company will also have to give the din number if it is a director the company will also give his consent form that the director is given his consent to act as a director and the company will also have to disclose whether the director has any interest in any body corporate whether the director has interest in any other firm any other body corporate that also the company is required to disclose then after that uh, you know once these documents are filed the roc shall verify all the information and issue the certificate of incorporation in form inc 11 and once the certificate of incorporation is issued in that particular situation uh, roc will also issue a corporate identification number to the company and this corporate identification number is going to be an identification number for the companies like for directors we have DIN number for companies we have SIN number and SIN number is a 21 alpha numeric digit number right and basically the SIN number reveals the various information about the company like in SIN number if the first character L is used it will denote that it's a listing company if in the SIN number the first letter used is U it will denote that it is an unlisted company right Similarly, if you see, if in the same number, uh, the word K is used, the word K is used, even the same number, that will indicate that it's a Karnataka based company. Uh, so accordingly, there are different codes given in the same number. Now, all the documents the company has filed to the ROC at the time of incorporation, company will have to maintain till the dissolution. And if the company has given any false information to the ROC, was then in that situation, the officers of the company shall be liable for fraud under section 447. And section 447 is the very very dangerous section for fraud so if during the incorporation process company files the wrong information the directors will be liable for fraud under section 447 and also the incorporation the roc will not issue the certificate of incorporation now if the company has already got itself incorporated by furnishing a wrong information now in now in that particular situation roc will refer the matter to the tribunal right that this company has got itself falsely incorporated so now what the tribunal can do is what the tribunal can do is tribunal can pass some orders see here also the officers will be liable under section 447 but now the tribunal can, can pass some orders what are the orders tribunal can pass tribunal can pass the order that you know will be changing the management there is a need to change the management or tribunal can pass an order that the limited liability status of the members will change to unlimited liability status the tribunal may pass a order to the ROC to remove the name from the company's registrar or the uh, tribunal may pass the most strict order that is order winding up for the company. But before making any kind of order, tribunal will give an opportunity of being heard. So this is something very common used in law that before taking any action, an opportunity of being heard will be always given. Then we have section number eight that is formation of companies with charitable objects. So you see, uh, according to section eight, so basically what will happen is that if any company wants to the license to work as a section 8 company the license will be given by the license will be given by the central government and central government here has delegated the powers to roc in act in several places you see that some places the power is given to roc and some places the power is given to regional director so basically if it's an incorporation thing basically if it's an incorporation thing basically if it's a winding up theme then the power will be given to roc right but RD, the regional director, he is an officer above the ROC. The regional director, he is an officer above the ROC. So you see, for everything, you need to intimate to the ROC. But to, for everything, you don't need to intimate to the regional director. Because the regional director is a person sitting above the ROC. So for everything, you are not going to disturb him. ROC, the regional director will be mainly seeing the, whether the ROC is working properly. 
the regional director he will be given the delegation of powers in case of more important situations right he will be given the delegation of powers in case of most important situations roc is also individual rd is also individual now it depends ki cg has delegated the power to roc uh, and what power the cg has delegated to rd now section 8 company has to fulfill three conditions only then it will get the license to work as a section 8 company firstly the objective of the section 8 company must be to promote commerce art science religion education protection of environment charity secondly the basic intention must be to apply the profits in promoting the object and thirdly section 8 company cannot declare dividend to its members in exam one question came that when the section 8 company was formed section 8 company provided in its articles that at the time of winding up what the members will do is they will distribute the surplus assets among them so it is not allowed because the basic fundamental of section 8 company is the intention must not be there to apply the profits uh, you know the intention must be there to apply the profits only in promoting the objective do remember opc section 8 company cannot be converted do remember uh, when we talk about section 8 company when we talk about a section 8 company in this particular situation one person company can never be converted into a section 8 company if you want to apply for the license of section 8 company again you have to apply for registration in spice plus form again the form number is inc 32 again you have to give the fees to the roc and here in the application the documents will change some documents will change here again you are going to give the memorandum the articles the copy of the memorandum the copy of the articles here you are also required to specify what is the estimate of the future annual income and expenditures of the company for the next three years here you are going to specify uh, you know what is going to be the source of income and what is going to be your objective because objective is the main thing in case of section 8 company here a declaration must be filed by an advocate chartered accountant company secretary cost accountant that the memorandum has been made as per the rules the articles have been has been made as per the rules right now supposingly later on supposingly later on section 8 company wants to alter its memorandum and section 8 company wants to alter its articles now be very very careful normally whenever a company other than a section 8 company wants to alter its memorandum and wants to alter its articles we have section 13 and 14 for that and normally special resolution will be passed mm -hmm. But when we talk about section 8 company, you see it is very important that in that case, if the object is changed, it might happen that, that they are turning the profitable object into a non-profitable object. So that is why only special resolution shall not do. Here CG approval will also be needed. See, I always told you for more important matters, RD comes, for less important matters, ROC comes. So now if the uh, section 8 company wants to alter its articles, they need the approval of ROC. But if the section 8 company want to alter its memorandum they need the approval of rd regional director because uh, cg approval is given and cg has delegated its pass now supposingly you have formed a section 8 company and later on you want to convert the section 8 company into any other form of company so law first says boss you need to take the approval of your members then you send a notice for the general meeting, call a general meeting, along with the notice you send an explanatory statement, you pass a special resolution and then after you pass a special resolution, now you also need, you also need to take the approval. You see, ROC say we don't need to take the approval to convert our company status. To convert our company status, you don't need approval for ROC. Now in this situation, what will happen is that if the section 8 company is changing, to any other kind of company it will need the approval of the regional director so it is going to make an application to the regional director along with the fee along with the copy of special resolution along with the copy of explanatory statement and it is also going to submit the regional director a proof that we have also sent the copy of application to the local to the chief commissioner or to the income tax officer who is having the jurisdiction in the company over the company or the charity commissioner so these very people, the chief secretary of the state, because you know this is a, this was a charitable organization. So all the local government authorities must know. So that is why they must intimate to these authorities and also give a notice to also give a proof to the ROC that a notice has been given to these people. And if these people want the chief commissioner of income tax, the income tax officer, charity commissioner, chief secretary of the state, they may make representation in the six, after within sixty days to the RD that we have a problem in this conversion. But even they can make a representation within 60 days only. After 60 days, even they cannot make a representation. 
Now what the company is going to do is company has given the application of RD. Now after that company is going to furnish in a newspaper that we are going to get at ourselves converted. At its own expenditure, it is going to publish in the newspaper. And whenever we talk in law that publish in the newspaper, it has to be in a vernacular newspaper, in principal language of the state, and one English newspaper. And also the company is required to inform in its website. Right. Now, once the ROC is satisfied with the application, RD will order the conversion. And if the ROC is the RD is rejecting the application, RD will give an opportunity of being heard. Now you see if the approval of RD is obtained. If the approval of RD is obtained, Section 8 company will have to alter its memorandum, alter its articles. So to alter its memorandum, alter its articles, it will again for a general meeting. And now again they will alter the memorandum, they will alter the articles. And then once the alteration is done, then they will file the altered information to the ROC. Now ROC comes into picture. ROC was not there while approving. Now ROC comes into picture. Now ROC will check, okay. SR has been passed, RD approval has been obtained, memorandum has been altered. So now only ROC will register the documents and issue a fresh certificate of incorporation. So this is the basic process. One more thing we have to remember that section 8 company cannot get itself converted into any other form of company if there is any default in filing of financial statements and annual returns up to the preceding year of making the application. So if it wants to get converted, first of all, it must clear the pending payments. It must clear the filing. Right. Now, if the Section 8 company makes any contravention, if the Section 8 company makes any contravention, then in that situation, there is a penalty that is given. The company shall be punishable minimum 10 lakh rupees, maximum 1 crore rupees. Directors and officers will be punishable minimum 25,000, maximum 25 lakh rupees. And officers in default again can be punishable for Section 447 if they have done any kind of fraud or something like that. There are also some relaxations given to Section 8 company. Like normally a company is required to give 21 days notice before the general meeting. But Section 8 company is required to give only a 14 days notice. Then comes Section 9 that is the effect of registration. So when the registration the company has got, then the company will start get exercising all its powers. The company will be called as a legally incorporated company. Company will start getting all its rights like perpetual succession. Power to hold the property in its own name. The power to sue in its own name. The power to sued, be sued in its own name. So all these things that, that will start happening when the registration the company has got. That is what section 9 says. Right, that is what section 9 says. Now we are coming to section 4 that is memorandum of association. So when you talk about memorandum of association, MOA is the most fundamental document as far as the incorporation of the company is concerned. MOA, uh, you know, defines the relationship of the company with the outsiders also. When we talk about memorandum, in memorandum mainly there are seven clauses. Name clause, situation clause, object clause, liability clause, capital clause, association or subscription clause, nominee clause. When we talk about name clause, now name clause is something very significant because if the name is changed, then the certificate of incorporation will also have to be changed. Similarly, when the situation clause, when the registered office is changed, the certificate of incorporation will also have to be changed. But when the object is changed, that will not be having any effect on certificate of incorporation. Right. The main thing that we have to remember here is the name clause and object clause. So if we talk about name clause, so the name of the company, uh, in case of public company that will end with the word limited, in case of private company that will end with the word private limited, in case of OPC that will end with the word OPC in bracket then private limited. Right. Uh, then application for reservation, uh, reserving the name of proposed company. So whenever any person proposes to reserve his name, because you know when you get a company incorporated, you have to reserve the name of the company. So the reservation of the name, the application you make again in Splice Plus form, INC 32. It's the same form for incorporation. If there is any defect in application, it will be resubmitted within 15 days. Now when the application for reserving the name is made, when the application for reserving the name is made by the existing companies, right, by the existing companies, then again resubmission shall be allowed within 15 days if there is any kind of defect. For new companies, we have a spice plus form and for the existing companies, uh, they can also use one run form, reserve unique name form along with the fee. Now there are several restrictions regarding the usage of name. There are several restrictions regarding the usage of name and that is why the, you know, uh, reservation concept is there. When the company applies to the ROC that please reserve my name, ROC can reserve the name of a new company for 20 days. 
and existing company for 60 days but roc will satisfy that the name the company has you know applied for is not contravening the requirement of the guidelines of name now what are the guidelines regarding name so basically what it says is that the name the company has proposed or the name of the company should not be resembling the name of an already existing company when we talk not resembling it means just by changing the spelling or just by put, putting full stops or just by changing letter after or just by changing letter before you cannot say that it's a different name it will be regarded as a similar name only it will be regarded as a similar name only you just change the tense past tense present tense it will be regarded as similar name only or the name should not constitute any offense under any law for the time being in society abusive languages are being used in society uh, you know some kind of murderer rapist gang you know gangster such kind of remarks you are using in the name of the company not allowed because it is offensive under any law and then any name that is undesirable in the opinion of cg that is roc that is also not allowed now cg approval will be needed in case the name that you are proposing is likely to use give an impression that the cg or sg is you know supporting the company that is having the patronage of the company for example you are using words like bjp congress the name of any popular leader or something like that it will give impression that the patronage of the government is there so approval of cg will be needed or they cannot use similarly any kind of words that is giving the impression that patronage of government is there for example they cannot use tribunal they cannot use prime minister they cannot use chief minister they cannot use cbi they cannot use bureau so such kind of words cannot be used so these are the name guidelines the roc will be reserving the name maximum for 20 days in case of existing companies uh, new companies and 60 days in case of existing companies but in case of uh, existing companies no extension of name is allowed but in case of new companies uh, then extension of name is allowed for another 20 days by paying a fees of 1000 rupees for right so total 40 days time will be there then further 20 days by paying fees of 2000 and if company needs a one time extension of 40 days by paying a fees of 3000 now after the name is reserved if the roc feels that oh the company applied the name by giving wrong information the reserved name may be cancelled the reserved name may be cancelled and the person who made the application shall be levied a fine up to 1 lakh rupees if the company has been incorporated and then after that the roc comes to know oh, that the name was obtained by giving a wrong information roc may direct the company to change its name within three months and if the roc directs the company to change the name within three months only ordinary resolution will be passed and the company can change its name roc can take also take action for striking of the name of the company from the register roc can also make petition for winding up then we have the situation clause when we talk about the situation clause see in situation clause basically the state is mentioned the state in which registered office is proposed to be situated the significance of situation clause is that the registered office is the place that is going to define the domicile of the company jurisdiction of the company it is the place where the books of accounts normally will be maintained and it is the place where normally all the notices communications will be sent and company must within 30 days of incorporation have its registered office now if there is any change in the state itself then uh, it will lead to alteration of memorandum if there is a change in the registered office uh, you know within the same state then in that situation alteration of memorandum is not done so section 13 will not be up section 13 that is the alteration of memorandum will not be applicable for that we have section 12 registered office that will be applicable then we have object clause and doctrine of ultra virus so basically the memorandum of a company shall state the object for which the company is formed and a company cannot depart away from the object and that is known as the doctrine of ultra virus this particular maxim was laid down in the case of Ashbury Railway Carriage and Iron Company Limited versus Riche. That company, if they do any act beyond the object clause, that will be void. And later on, even the full body of shareholders cannot ratify the given act. Later on, even the full body of shareholders cannot ratify the given act. Only one option the company has. The company should first call general meeting, alter MOA, then do such a act. Then we have the liability clause. Liability clause is very simple. You can do capital clause is very simple. Subscription clause is very simple. Nominee clause, one thing to remember about nominee clause is if there is any change in the nominee, that will not be regarded to, as an alteration of MOA. Then there are several forms of a MOA. Uh, you know, that is given in table A, B, C, D, E. So it is very simple. When we talk about table A, it is MOA of the company limited by share. Then table B, now you think guarantee. First share, then guarantee. 
गारंटी नॉट हैविंग शेयर कैपिटल गारंटी हैविंग शेयर कैपिटल तो टेबल बी दैट इज एम ओ एफ ए कंपनी लिमिटेड बाई गारंटी नॉट हैविंग शेयर कैपिटल टेबल सी मेमोरेंडम ऑफ एसोसिएशन ऑफ ए कंपनी लिमिटेड बाई गारंटी हैविंग शेयर कैपिटल दैन अनलिमिटेड कंपनी अनलिमिटेड कंपनी नॉट हैविंग शेयर कैपिटल अनलिमिटेड कंपनी हैविंग शेयर कैपिटल तो टेबल डी अनलिमिटेड कंपनी है नॉट हैविंग शेयर कैपिटल टेबल ई अनलिमिटेड कंपनी हैविंग शेयर कैपिटल सिमिलरली इफ यू टॉक अबाउट आर्टिकल्स ऑफ एसोसिएशन दे हैव देयर ओन टेबल्स दे हैव देयर ओन टेबल्स राइट द ओन मॉडल फॉर्म ऑफ आर्टिकल्स टेबल एफ जी एच आई जे टेबल एफ जी एच आई जे एदर द कंपनीज कैन एडॉप्ट ऑल द रेगुलेशन फ्रॉम दिस टेबल और द कंपनी में एडॉप्ट देयर ओन रेगुलेशन इन आर्टिकल्स द मोस्ट इंपॉर्टेंट थिंग टू रिमेंबर इज दैट You see, whenever there is an alteration in the articles, normally S R is to be passed. Now, articles means uh, it is containing the rules, regulations of the company. It is complementary to memorandum and the second most important document of the company. In the article of association, company, let us say, company wants to include an entrenchment clause. Entrenchment clause means something that is more restrictive than the law itself, right? So, if the company wants to include an alteration, you know, entrenchment clause, that is something that is more uh, restrictive than the law itself. For example, in a few places, law requires a special resolution, but in our articles, we have specified that we need 95% approval. So that entrenchment provision can either be included at the time of forming the articles, and if we include such a entrenchment provision after the company is formed, then in case of private company, they will need the consent of all its members to include such a entrenchment provision, and in case of public company, they will need to pass special resolution. And if such change is done, then the it will be filed to the ROC within 30 days. then if we talk about articles of association and memorandum of association there is also a doctrine of constructive notice and doctrine of indoor management what the doctrine of constructive notice says that basically all the people all the people who are dealing with the moa aoa they should assume that we assume that they have read the moa they have read the aoa because these are public documents and section 399 also says the same and that is what doctrine of constructive notice is that is what doctrine of constructive notice is but the doctrine of constructive notice is very very severe the doctrine of constructive notice is very very severe because we assume that every person has read the content of moa every person has read the content of aoa right so that is why to bring down reduce the harsh effect of doctrine of constructive notice there is another doctrine doctrine of indoor management there is another doctrine that is doctrine of indoor management that was laid down in the case of royal british bank versus trust fund and what does this doctrine say that okay moa aoa are public documents that is fine but even the outsiders can rely that the company has complied with its internal proceedings the outsiders can also rely that the company must have complied with its internal proceedings for example let us say company was authorized to do something but after passing a sr the outsiders can assume that sr has been passed but doctrine of indoor management is mainly not applicable if the outsider already had a regular knowledge of irregularity for example let us say the outsider is a member only and he is entering a contract with the company now being a member of the company he clearly knows that sr is not passed and then he cannot take the benefit of doctrine that oh i was you know that particularly sr was not passed because he was aware of the same similarly uh, if he could have easily found out but he was negligent then also the doc doctrine will not help him and thirdly in case of forgery if some doctors have done a fraud then the doctrine will not be applicable section 6 says that the act will uh, you know override the memorandum that will override the articles section 10 says effect of memorandum articles memorandum articles creates a binding contract between the members and the company between the company and the members but it does not create a binding contract between the members and the members so company will be accountable towards the members members will be accountable towards the company uh, you know by whatever is written in the memorandum whatever is written in the articles so that is what section 10 says then we have section uh, section 11 that is not there in the chapter right now that is removed coming to section 13 that is alteration of memorandum so normally when we talk about alteration of memorandum special resolution must be passed and the copy of the sr must be intimated to roc now in alteration of memorandum if we talk about name change then logically speaking see if we talk about name change in that situation roc approval must be obtained along with the sr approval because there are several guidelines regarding name and the roc will have to check whether those guidelines are being complied with or not so company will have to take the approval of cg CG here has delegated the part to ROC. Please be please remember that in case of name clause, uh, in case of name clause, if the company wants to change the name, now CG has given the part to ROC. But in case of because ROC deals with the name part, but in case of situation clause, when company wants to change the address, there the part is given to RD to approve, because RD verifies normally all the things like the interest of creditors and all. 
so all the incorporation part roc is there but any external part where creditors interest and all are involved the rd comes into picture so name change roc approval uh, and after that you need to pass a special resolution roc issues a fresh certificate of incorporation because in the fresh certificate of incorporation name of company is there and that is changing here but only if the change is that you know the words private is added or deleted in that situation roc approval will not be needed again only just intimation to the roc will be sufficient if the company has changed the name in the last two years do remember in all its documents company will have to inform the old name as well as the new name then comes the change in the registered office clause now do remember if the change in registered office is from one state to another that is leading to a alteration in moa section 13 is applicable here sr must be passed rd approval must also be taken regional director approval must also be taken and intimation must be done to the roc and intimation must be done to the roc right and it is quite logical that here when rd approval is obtained when rd approval is obtained after that well company will have to inform the existing roc also and the company will have to inform the new roc also and then the new roc will issue a fresh certificate of incorporation but when there is a change when there is a change in the situation clause within the same state then in that situation section 12 is applicable 13 is not applicable 12 is applicable uh, if the change is within the same city then only bold resolution is sufficient even sr is not needed but if the change is uh, from one city to another but the roc is not changing change is from one city to another but roc is not changing then in that particular scenario what we have to do is we need to file the copy of special resolution we need to pass special resolution and intimate about it to, to the roc but if there is a change from one city to another which also involves a change in roc then the id approval must also be obtained because the roc is changing because the roc is changing so since the roc is changing id approval will also be have to be obtained there right but do remember if the change is happening within the state then fresh certificate of incorporation will not be issued but only when the change is happening outside the state the state is changing only then the fresh certificate of incorporation will be issued so those things are there in section 12 now coming back to section 13 we also have object object you know change in the object clause for normal alteration in object clause pass sr file copy of sr to the roc but if the company has raised money through prospectus and miss utilize the money company told something else in the prospectus company is using the money somewhere else then in that situation company needs to not only pass a special resolution that sr must be passed only through postal ballot point number 1 Come point number two, company has to advertise about it in the newspaper. Point number three, the dissenting shareholders who are not happy that we were told that money will be invested in somewhere else, they will be given an exit opportunity, and then after that, finally the alteration will be recorded with the register. Again, in the change of object, will ROC issue a fresh certificate of incorporation? The answer is no. then we have section 14 that is alteration of articles of association so basically art articles may simply be altered by passing a special resolution but you see anything that is big that will require the rd approval any alteration that is having the effect of converting a public company into a private company so now that is a big big thing that a public company is being converted into a private company so here rd approval must also be taken sr must be passed but here rd approval is also taken like in the situation clause uh, roc was changing rd approval was taken here again public company is converted into a private company rd approval is taken right so along with sr rd approval is also taken and certain declarations must be given to the regional director only after the declarations are given to the regional director the rd will give his approval like you will inform to the rd the draft copy of moa aoa or uh, the copy of resolution you have passed the copy of the minutes of the meeting the copy of board resolution declaration by the key managerial personnel that you have complied declaration by the key managerial personnel that you have done the compliances and once the alteration is done intimation has to be given to the roc within 15 days then we have section 15 that is again a continuation of the moa aoa sections every alteration that has happened in the moa and in the aoa roc is required to record the same in his register that is what section 15 says and section 17 is also related with the moa aoa only if any member of the company wants a copy of moa aoa he will request the company 
you will pay the prescribed fee and company within seven days will provide the copy of moa aoa to the member we have section 16 that is rectification of name now you see it is something very important let us say uh you have named your company with an identical company with a similar company and roc by mistake has given the certificate of incorporation now in that particular situation now in that particular situation what will happen is that you see rd now roc ne to khud hi naam diya hai na roc himself approved the name so now how will now how will roc tell to rectify the name so in sab cheezon ke liye regional director hota hai to oversee whether the roc is working everything in a proper manner so now rd ne dekha ki oh roc gave a wrong name now rd must have seen that roc approved a wrong name so in this situation when the regional director is of the opinion that the name is identical or too nearly resembles the name of an existing company as the regional director on its own may direct the company that you get your name changed from the roc right or what may happen is that uh, the application of proprietor of the registered trademark the application of the proprietor of the registered trademark let us say let us say you have made a, you have you know incorporated the company with the name reliance only spelling is different roc issued the certificate of incorporation and the owner of reliance have made an uh, application that you are using a registered trademark then upon that application also the rd may give the direction but this application by your owner of a registered trademark can be made within three years of the incorporation of company only this application by the uh, owner of the registered trademark can be made within three years of the incorporation of company only after three years they cannot make the application but yes id ka marzi wa then on its own it can do or the owner of a registered trademark can request the you know owner directly now once this id approval has id direction has come company will change the name company will call the special uh, general meeting it will pass the special resolution now it will intimate the registrar that we got a id notice so accordingly we have changed the name and this is the copy of id application id order this is the copy of special resolution and again the id again the roc will issue a fresh certificate of incorporation because the name is changing section 12 that is talking about the registered office of the company so once the company gets incorporated it has to set up its registered office within 30 days that is very very important isfc companies may do it within 60 days every company outside its place of business will have to give the details of its name and the address of the registered office in legible letters both in local language as well as english language right that is something you have to remember uh then the alteration of then the alteration of uh, registered office we already discussed that if there is a change in the registered office within the same state within the same city board resolution is sufficient outside the same city roc remains the same special resolution is sufficient but outside the same city roc is also changing rd approval is needed what is needed rd approval is needed now within the revision there are no queries now section 10a commencement of business section 10a commencement of business what section 10a says a company incorporated shall commence any business or exercise any borrowing power uh, only if two conditions are satisfied one is the company has filed with a registrar a verification of registered office and th secondly a declaration is given by the company a declaration is given by the company that the subscribers to memorandum who purchased to subscribe the shares have subscribed their shares and those declaration will be given though that declaration will be given within 180 days of the incorporation of a company and that declaration should be verified by a company secretary or a chartered accountant or cost accountant of the company right and if this particular condition is not satisfied a declaration is not given within 180 days then the company shall be liable for 50000 rupees fine and the officer in default shall be liable for 1000 rupees fine and that may be maximum 1 lakh rupees and also the roc may strike of the name of the company if you are continuously what you are not doing is not filing the declaration section 18 conversion of companies already registered so basically what happens is that if you have converted your company from one form to another you will file an application to the to the registrar roc will cancel your earlier name and roc will issue your register your new name 
and give you a certificate of incorporation. But your debt liabilities that will remain the same. Just by changing the company, converting the company, you will you cannot you know run away from your old debts, old liabilities. That is going to remain the same. Section 19 it says subsidiary company normally cannot hold shares in the holding company. Subsidiary company normally cannot hold shares in the holding company. However, there are three exceptions in which subsidiary company can hold shares in the holding company. That is legal representative, trustee, old member. So point number one is if the subsidiary is holding the shares of the holding as the legal representative of a deceased member of the holding, it can do so. Point number two, if the subsidiary is holding the share as a trustee, it can do. And point number three, that is the subsidiary company hold, you know, hold the shares of the holding before the holding subsidy relationship came into being. Then it can continue to do so. But even if it continues to hold the share, it will not get the voting right. It will not get the voting right. If as the uh, right, it will not get as the voting right in that case. Then we have section 20 service of documents. What is the service of document? Suppose any member has to send any document to the company where the member will send. Company will have to send any document to the member where the company will send. And company will have to send to the ROC then how the company will send. So where to send, how to send. So service of document to the company or officer thereof. If you have to send any document to the company or an officer of the company, you can send only at the registered office of the company. You can send only at the registered office of the company and you can send only by way of registered post, speed post, courier or you can leave at the registered office of the company or you can send by electronic means that is mail and fax. Right. And if you, if the company is sending the notice to the registrar, if the company is sending any notice to the registrar or member, right, in that particular scenario also, it can be, if the company is sending, then it can be by post or registered post or speed post or courier or electronic means. If the company is sending, ordinary post is allowed. But if some member is sending to the company, ordinary post is not allowed. One more thing, if a member requests that the document be served to him only by a particular mode of communication. For example, the member requests, please don't send me by ordinary post, send me by courier. I'll be paying the charges for that. Then in that situation, company cannot refuse. Company will have to send the document only by that prescribed mode. But the member has to pay the charges. But the member can request, but the member can request the company only to send the document in a different mode by paying the fees. But he cannot, he cannot change his registered address. The company will be sending the notice only at the registered address of the member. Member cannot ask to send the document at some other address. That also we have to remember. Now, in case of Nidhi companies, they have a small exemption. In case of Nidhi companies, they have a small exemption. That is, what is done is, uh, when we talk about Nidhi companies, Nidhi companies is not uh, required to send the notice to all its members, notice of general meeting to all its members. It is required to send the copy of notice of meeting to only those members who are holding shares of more than 1000 rupees in face value or more than 1% of paid up share capital, whichever is less. Right. And what about the other shareholders? Nidhi companies will inform in the newspaper and put in, put in its notice board. For the other shareholders, the Nidhi companies will inform in the newspaper put in its notice board. And only for the big members, the Nidhi companies are going to inform. One more thing, when the company sends the notice of general meeting by post, we don't know when the post will reach. So that is why the law expressly says that in case of notice of meeting, when the company sends the notice by post, after the expiry of 48 hours, we assume that the letter is posted. Yeah. Then section 21, authentication of documents. So basically any document or any proceeding requiring authentication of company or contracts made by the company, when that will be authenticated, that will be authenticated when it is signed by the key manager personnel of the company or officer or employee of the company whom the board has authorized. And finally, we have section 22. Section 22 mainly says, see, if the company executes a bill of exchange or hundi or promissory note. Then in that situation, if the company endorses a bill of exchange, hundi or promissory note, that will be and that will be signed by some of the officer. But how will the company authorize that officer? The company will authorize that officer either by giving him express authority or implied authority. But if the company enters into any deed, that, then how will the company authorize the officer to enter into any deed on behalf of the company? Now implied authority is not going to work. Company will have to give a express authority through power of attorney only. Right. And how that authority will be given? Company in its writing, 
in a document either the company will use the common seal or if the common seal is not there get it authorized by two directors or one director and one company secretary and then they may authorize the person to enter into any deed on behalf of the company so that is what section 22 says right that is what section 22 says and once again if we summarize the flow of sections in the chapter uh, so what is the flow section 3 that talked about formation and opc 4 was memorandum 5 was articles 13 was alteration of moa 14 was alteration of articles 15 was roc to recall the alteration 17 is if a member wants a copy of moa aoa they can make an application within seven days the company will send right then we have uh, section number 7 that is incorporation, 8 that is section 8 company, 9 that is effect of registration, 10 that is uh, binding effect of MOA, AOA, 10 a commencement of business, 12 that is registered office, that is then we have section number 16 rectification of name, 18 when the existing companies are converted we need to inform to the ROC, 19 subsidiary company should not hold share in the holding company, then 20 we have a you know service of notice 21 is authentication and 20 is execution of bills of exchange execution of deeds by the company so this is that we have to remember uh, in this particular chapter that is chapter number two incorporation